Hello and welcome. Welcome to another Soul Lucian Sunday because being the soul that you are is the Soul Lucian. We are grand beings of light and it's time for us to remember who we are because when we remember who we are and we start trusting the process of the universe, Magic and miracles are ours for the having. And speaking of magic and miracles, today we are here with my good friend Ben Birchall. You may have seen him on a couple of previous episodes of Solution Sunday. And Ben is a new thought leader, and he is here to talk about some miracles that he has experienced. Ben, welcome back to Solution Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. We always have so much good fun talking, and Me I too. hope that uh, your viewers and listeners you know, gain some benefit out of them. I know I do. <laughs> we all do, for sure yeah so welcome so since the last time you were on you've had a bit of a healing event happen a little bit of magic and miracle action eh <laughs> you see, i think i'll say sorry <laughs> yes and so would my surgeon say <laughs> it's just I, i'm i'm still just giddy with delight at the surgeon's um, <laughs> bewilderment, <laughs> you know, it's it's when you're living in, I guess we shall say, a higher dimension than people that we're living appear to be living around. They don't always get you, and they don't always understand how things are happening <laughs> in your life, and they think that's not possible yet they're looking right at it right but how is that possible <laughs> so what has happened um hmm, where shall i begin oh my goodness it's just there's just been so many miracles and so much good energy swirling around um i had come down i guess it's hmm, has it been three months now I, I had come down with um, norovirus, stomach flu, where I was at my night job in the middle of the night and started projectile vomiting mm -hmm. out of nowhere. And um, I stayed home from work for the next two days and thought everything was fine. And then I started having to go to the bathroom, number two, like 10 times a day. Oh, my goodness. And um, that stuck around for like six weeks. And towards the end of that time, my abdomen hurt so bad that there was this one evening that I was just not going to be able to go to work. I was in too much pain. And uh, so I ended up going to the ER uh, for some help. And the ER doc, when he pre just pressed my tummy, I almost jumped off the bed. It was so painful. And then he pressed on the other side and the same thing. Now, of course, when, when I pressed, I didn't, I mean, I knew it was tender, but I didn't feel that much. So, but when he pressed, of course, oh my God, the pain was just unbearable. And he said, okay, I think I should order a CT scan. So, he ordered a CT scan and I went and got that done. And he came back into the room afterwards with me and he said, we've got to talk. So I'm not thinking anything, you know, serious or anything to tell you the truth. But he said, we've got to talk. And he flipped, he brings this computer terminal in and he shows me my scan and he's flipping through the different layers of my body. And I'm looking at things and I'm, you know, recognizing some of the organs and whatnot. It's a fascinating thing that they can do. And he points over here to 
what he called my ureter. I've never heard this term before. This is the tube that takes urine from your kidney to your bladder. And he circles this thing and he says, you see that right there? That's a tumor. There's a two inch tumor. And I'm just listening. And he talks some more. And the interesting thing is, I didn't go into fear. I didn't get triggered. I just listened. And that kind of surprised me. Because like I shared with you before, uh, back in 2010, when they found something in my lung and the doctor uttered that C word, cancer, everything just went gray. <laughs> and I heard absolutely nothing else after that. This was a different experience for me. So, you know, he says, well, we need to get you in with uh, a specialist so that he could take a look and give you, you know, his opinion and, you know, you can go from, from there. So within, I guess it was within like two and a half weeks, I had had that appointment and went in for a biopsy. Now, <laughs> what happened that night when I was at the ER, um, my friend Keith, which is one of your friend too, and has been uh, with you on Solution Sunday quite a bit, right. happened to um, text me while I was at the ER, while I was in the room. Um, and so I texted him back and just asked him to hold me in the light. And I told him what was going on. And he said, well, before you do anything, I want you to talk to my friend, Lisa. She's magic. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm open. Because I had said, you know, whatever help that I need, I want it to come to me now. And uh, so I said, who knows, maybe... Whatever Lisa has to say to me is exactly what I need to hear. So that's when we first met after he had contacted me uh, about you. And, you know, we contacted through Facebook and whatnot. And um, I remember that conversation we had. Um, I had already had that Kundalini awakening mm -hmm. experience. And so many changes were happening in my life. And I guess I was in a state where you didn't really have to do a whole bunch of teaching or cajoling or whatnot. You were just really a confirming for me that I had the power to heal myself. And just a gentle reminder of who I was as you know, as you always say, the grand beings of light that we are. <laughs> and, you know, we say you checked in with me a time or two after that. And in the meantime, up until the time I went in for the biopsy, um, I had some conversations with some other friends of mine who are also of the same vein. And, um, oh, my dear friend, Reverend Mitch Austin. Um, end up giving me uh, a spiritual practitioner session and made a suggestion to me that I look up Louise Hay's, um, the chart from Louise Hay of the body parts and symptoms and what each thing means. And I did that while we were, you know, in the midst of this session. And um, he had me to look up the kidney and kidney problems. And I looked up what Louise Hay said kidney issues um, represent. And he said, does any of that resonate? <laughs> the tears just <laughs> started to fall because it absolutely did. And the, the biggest thing that she mentioned about the kidneys that 
really struck me was failure and resentment. And I just knew right then what it was all about as I read that. Feeling of failure. You know, back in 2009, 2010, 2011, uh, my life fell apart. I was working a um, high-stress corporate job in uh, the corporate risk management. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a two-hour commute one way to work. Ouch. And I was not working according to my body's um, natural sleep cycle. Uh, unlike most people, I function much later with my sleep cycle. I've been this way ever since birth, mm -hmm. which frustrated my mother to no end mm -hmm. uh, because my sleep cycle functions much later than normal. They even have a term for it. They <laughs> call it a disorder. Right? <laughs> exactly. Dele delayed sleep phase disorder or delayed sleep phase syndrome. <laughs> It's really just a normal variation of sleep cycle. Back when human beings were hunter-gatherers, people who had that natural sleep cycle, they were the ones that would be up at night, you know, keeping watch and protecting the rest of the camp, the rest of the tribe. So it was a useful thing. Right. In our society, anything that seems out of what they call the norm, they call them disorders. Yeah. So the combination of working outside of my natural sleep cycle, working a high stress job that I hated and having to be on the freeway. And if you know anything about freeways in Southern California, <laughs> you know that it is no pleasure being on the freeways <laughs> during rush hour. <laughs> so... It was a very, shall we say, depressing life. And uh, I ended up having some heart issues. I was only in my mid thirties. And even the cardiologist said, well, I can't really find anything organically wrong with your heart. <laughs> Do you have a stressful job or anything? <laughs> but it was so normal to me. I did not interpret it as stressful wow. and I said well no not really nah. it wasn't until I was on the freeway one day going home um, looking into oncoming traffic on the other side of the freeway and I thought I wonder what it would be like to drive into oncoming traffic that's when I finally realized that I needed more help than I could give myself at that moment I was under so much stress externally and internally from traumas that I had not integrated and processed and dealing. And because of that, having made certain choices in my life that um, gave me a high stress life. So when my life just fell apart around all of that, I went from being middle class, living, you know, three blocks from the ocean to living in my car. And in the decade plus since then, I have carried this sense of failure from that time period. And then on top of that, had some deaths in my family this year uh, and reconnected with the family. And that was very traumatic for me. And suddenly this tumor appears. Mm -hmm. So when Reverend Rich Mitch asked me, did any of what Louise Hay said in this chart resonate it, I saw it immediately. I saw it immediately. And he began to just ask me some questions to sort of guide my thoughts and help me unravel some of those feelings and some of those, you know, that's that's really the best counselors or therapists or practitioners that's what they do they don't give you your answers they don't give you advice they just help you unravel what's going on in your mind and hold the space for you to rise to another level of thinking 
And he did that for me that night. And another friend of mine, Dr. Lori, uh, she is a uh, New Thought practitioner. And she spoke with me one night, prayed with me, and she looked me in my eyes. And she just has this gaze that just, just penetrates, just penetrates through all of the stuff right to the center of your heart. And she said to me, it is already done. And I left that session just knowing it was over. It was done. There was no doing techniques, no affirming, no, you know, all of these things. There was just, it is done. And so when I went, walked into the um, urology surgeon's office for the first time, I said to him, after we said hello, I said, you must be a very good doctor because I intend that anybody that I'm dealing with is that. And he said, oh, well, thank you. I'm glad to hear you say that. And I said, before we get started, I want to get your agreement about something. I said, we will not be using certain words. I said, we will not be using the C word. And he kind of like looked at me and I said, cancer. We will not be using the T word. No, the M word, I'm sorry, mass. I said, because those words have a bit of charge on them that I don't like. But I'm okay with using the word tumor. So let's talk about the tumor. And he was very good in agreeing with me and everything. And I, to I told him uh, that I just know that the power that made this body sustains and heals this body. And I asked him, are you a man of faith of any kind? And he said, oh, yeah, you have to be in this business. So I said, oh, good, good. And, you know, he did his consultation and everything. And at the end, he kind of did a, a 180 on me real quick as he was preparing to walk out of the office sending and send me away. He said, well, there's nothing that you can do about this. This has already happened. And I didn't respond out loud, but I said to myself, you just watch me. <laughs> So when I when we went in for the biopsy, uh, I'm having a conversation with the nurse that was prepping me. I need a little sip of my water here. And it was a fantastic conversation. <laughs> we talked about faith and healing and miracles and whatnot. And I got the sense that we have very different perspectives on spirituality and religion. And that was just fine. I didn't care about that. You know, I'm just creating, you know, the atmosphere around me, regardless of who's in it, the atmosphere that I wanted to have. And I told her about how I had been healed of this thing in my lung many years ago. And I said to her, you know, I'm totally cool with them going in here and not being able to find this thing at all. And she said, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so then the two um, uh, surgical tech nurses came to get me after I had been all prepped and everything and met with the anesthesiologist and everything. And I was just waiting for some good sleep. Because I know those drugs, I was like, they're going to knock me out pretty good. I'm just waiting for some rest here. And they said, oh, you know, we heard that you're a little nervous. I said, oh, absolutely not. I'm ready for this. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the happy juice. That's all. So they wheeled me on back. And the last thing I remember was um, I scooted over to the operating table. And um, they put the thing on my face, you know, giving me the oxygen and then the medication or whatever. And my nose itched. And uh, the nurse said, well, go ahead and scratch your nose. 
and I scratched my nose and that was the last thing I remember until I was waking up. Now they had told me, oh, it's gonna feel like, you know, you just went to sleep and no time passed. That wasn't true for me. I felt like I had just had the best sleep ever. Like I had slept for days. And as I was waking up, I heard the nurse be above my head talking to my friend that had taken me to the hospital say to her, oh my God, he said this was going to happen. Mm. And the whole time he was under anesthesia, he was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so after I, you know, got awake, uh, my I saw my friend was sitting over on my left side and she started telling me what the uh, surgeon had told her. And she said, the surgeon is baffled. Mm -hmm. He had gone, you know, they went in through my urethra and on up through the bladder and through the ureter. And he, they, uh, he said that he had gone up past where the tumor was supposed to be in there and couldn't find it. He went up all the way up into the kidney trying to find something and couldn't find anything. <laughs> and couldn't find anything even abnormal. <laughs> so I'm just grateful. I'm just really grateful. You know, before I went in for the biopsy, I started getting into this, oh, I need to do these various things and I need to, you know, do this and that, and, you know, and and it started to feel a little overwhelming. And I just said to myself, and I manifest a lot of things by asking questions. I said, what if I don't have to do another damn thing? What if it really is just done? And it was, exactly. it was. I used to teach a lot of various manifesting techniques and methods and, and so forth. And I've done many of them myself. And over time, it's narrowed and narrowed and narrowed, letting go of more and more techniques and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I've, over time, over these years of coaching and counseling with people, have noticed that none of that stuff has ever been the cause of anybody getting their manifestation. <laughs> it's always been usually just a conversation, holding space for, for them, asking them targeted questions to where they see that the thoughts they are believing are what's causing them stress and are lies. Yes. And just that moment of realization all of a sudden, their manifestations just happen. And so over time, I've let go of more and more of all the various techniques that I've learned over the years and everything. And going through this experience was a huge, huge signal to me that I could let all of them go because none of them have any power. There's not even power in words. There's not even power in thoughts. I'm the power. You're the power. Anything that appears to have power only has power because we put it into it by our choice. Exactly. We that the only power. real principle to manifestation is making a choice. Exactly. Making a choice. And even better yet, making a decision Absolutely. because a decision is a choice where you cut off all other options. Yes. And that's what Dr. Lori helped me to do that night when she looked into my eyes and said, it is done. She was calling me to make a choice to choose my healing. And it was so fast. I mean, it was just, there was no time involved. It was like the moment that I made that choice to know that it was done, it was done. 
and the biopsy just confirmed that it was done. Yep. And it was brilliant. It brilliant. Even when I went, they did have to put, they did put in a, um, a stent, you know, because whenever they go into there so that it doesn't close up because of what they did, they put on the stent, you know, and I had it in for two weeks. And when I, when I went in for them to take it out, he was still just baffled, still just baffled, you know, just couldn't believe, you know, well, what is this thing that we can't find? <laughs> and I'm still laughing about it weeks later because it's just a joy to know that we are so magical that we can be looked at as impossible by the people around us. It's like, that's not possible. You can't just disappear tumors. <laughs> Absolutely you can. Greg Braden captured it on video with um, a, a, in China, a woman with a stomach tumor, a very large tumor. And the doctors around her, they all got in the same mindset. They all got on, they had some vibrations that they were sending, some words that they were sending. They put it on the ultrasound and all together within three minutes, that tumor just went, they were all in agreement that it was done. And it just, they watched it shrink and go away. Yeah, I, I remember watching him talk about that um, experience years ago. And when I watched that video, that was during a time when I would have called myself an atheist. Mm. But I still somehow knew that the universe was intelligent. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. I've gone through several huge crises of faith, you know, questioning what I believe and trying to figure out what is it that I believe? What can I accept to be true? And um, I just know that I know. And as I was telling a friend yesterday, I say, you know, what if someone's right and I'm wrong about this whole thing. I don't even care anymore because whatever it is that I'm believing in doing has impacted my life in such a beneficial way that if it's all a lie, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, cancer going, you know, finances improving, relationships improving what more could you want, you know, other than to have positive effects in your life? So if it's self-delusion, then I'm all for it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, I love that word, delusion, the illu the, the de-structuring of the illusion. <laughs> like, I like that. I'm going to steal that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Right. Oh, yeah. Have to be delusioned, delusional. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. It happens as we believe. And that's, you know, this is a really profound um, sharing that you have because when we know it is done, when we make a choice, when we decide something and we are all in, it happens, but only every single time. Like our friend oh, yeah. Keith says, it happens as we believe, but only every yeah. single time. You know, I'm I this has really taken me to a different level. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna sound real odd to a lot of people. You don't have to believe. Exactly. There's way beyond that. You got it. Just yeah. choose. Knowing. I chose. Yep. I can't tell you that I believed that it was gone. I didn't know that it was gone or whether it was there. I just chose that I was healed. Yes. And that it was done. Exactly. I just chose. And it's that. You don't have to believe. You don't right. have to exactly. do all these things to try to make yourself believe or feel it. And there was none of that. There was just 
It's done. I choose to know that it's done. Yep. And that's it. Exactly. And it really does take me back to um, an example that I used to use all the time. And I'm getting it more at a different level now as a result of this healing. And I used to tell people, you know, that that choice and action are connected. You know, if I say that I want to be on the other side of the room, nothing happens until I make a decision to be on the other side of the room. Exactly. And when people ask, well, do you have to do anything in order to manifest? I'm like, the only people that ask the question like that are people that haven't made a choice. Because if I make the choice to be over there, automatically the body gets up and gets over there. Exactly. It's a part of the choice. The choice compels you to be something. And there's nothing about belief in there. I choose to get up. I don't believe that I'm on the other side of the room or know that I'm on the other. I decide yes. to be on the other side of the room. There's a difference there. And now I'm not saying that you cannot manifest through belief and through knowing. There are multiple paths to manifestation, perhaps. But I'm really seeing nowadays that even those things only work when you're when they're being triggered by choice because there are plenty of people that walk around believing things and they don't happen i've i've counseled with people that said oh i believe you know that i'm going to win the lottery or that i'm going to have this or that or the other and and then when it doesn't happen they are really really disappointed and they're disappointed because they really did believe and they were sincere in it but they didn't make a choice. Uh, one one particular gentleman, he wasn't really a client. He was just a, a friend of mine. We were connected on Facebook, and you know he asked to have a conversation with me about money and and um, career and lottery, and you know he wanted certain things to happen, and he was believing for them, and nothing had been happening, and when I asked him about, well, what are you choosing to be and to do? That's where it all fell apart <laughs> because he wasn't willing to make a choice. Mm -hmm. He was waiting for something outside of himself to drop into his lap yeah. rather than to make the decision to be the prosperous person that he says he wanted to be because he had certain ideas about what that meant and oh that means i'm gonna have to do this this and the other and all oh, that's hard and so because of his beliefs around it he wouldn't choose to be prosperous exactly. and yet he's believing that you know this lottery is going to just drop into his lap or somebody's going to die and leave him all this money that somehow out of out of the blue without him having to do anything whatsoever this jackpot was just going to appear for him mm -hmm. yeah. and not to say that sometimes things can't appear to be that way but that's rare life is wanting us to allow it to live through us yes. we're here to be the expression so if we're not making the choice it's probably not going to happen. So there may be things like in me choosing that this is done, a part of it was to listen to my intuition when it started telling me to drink green tea. There were things that my insides <laughs> began to tell me to do that came out of the choice. So it was for me to follow those things because if I was the healed, healthy person that I was choosing to be, then I would need to be also being that person. Exactly. And stay being that person. Exactly. So I'm just 
so grateful. And I'm thankful for, you know, Keith being used to contact me at the very night that I was in the ER room mm -hmm. waiting for the doctor to come back in. And for him, right after saying, right after me saying, whatever help I need, I want it to come to me. And then saying, talk to Lisa. And it was like everything that I needed. And all I really needed was for people to remind me of who I was. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, we live in this society that really mm. does its best to convince us that we're not grand beings of light, that we're not powerful creators and manifestors, that we don't have mm. choices. And, you know, mm -hmm. fear and doubt and worry and guilt and shame and, you know, all of these thought viruses are constantly mm -hmm. being projected at us. And, you know, as kids, you know, we're like, wow, really? Yikes. This is, you know, and it gets us really confused and it gets us really on guard. You know, all of that programming that we receive. And, you know, it's not our fault that we, you know, received all of that. But now, as we start to mature and we start to realize, hey, you know, I have some choices here. You know, we can start to tune in, you know, when when I found myself facing cancer, it was, wait a second, you know, what do what do I know about this mm. body? It was like, well, one of the things I know about this body is that every single time I've ever had a cut or a bruise or a break or a sprain, my body has always healed itself. <laughs> You get a cold or a flu, my body always has healed itself. So obviously, the divine design is that these bodies are designed to heal themselves. But when it comes to stuff going on internally, we're taught, well, no, there's a pill for that. You have to go to the experts. You have to have somebody fix you. Like, mm. And then we forget that we actually have the power to choose, that our mm -hmm. body follows our guidance. And when we choose to restore our balance, body, mind, soul, the body mm -hmm. simply follows suit. And it can be just as quick as a decision. Mm-hmm. I posted uh, about a week ago in my uh, online community that, uh, if I can remember how I worded it, it was it was something like, "We are vibrational beings, and within us we have energy fields, various energy fields, and one of them is our body." The body isn't something that's separate from us. That's a part of us. It's a part of our energy fields. It's just one of them. And it functions according to the vibrations of our mind. Yep. And, you know, people, we like to think of certain people as superhuman, but they're really not. It's that perhaps the rest of us are subhuman. And we haven't learned how to tap into the vibration of our bodies. I mean, there are people that do amazing feats with their bodies. I remember watching a, a video of um, this Asian dude. I think he was Chinese. And he was a um, Tai Chi practitioner. And he literally pulled a bus on a rope with a that uh, was attached to this thing that he bit in his mouth uh -huh. and he literally was able to move this vehicle and we've all heard of stories of like a mother or you know a father you know seeing their child stuck under a car yeah. and being able to lift the car off of the child in that moment 
we have more capabilities in our bodies than any of us are currently exercising. Now, maybe we can't control and do everything. Maybe. But we sure can do a lot more than we have been told. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And I'm just, there's just no words. I mean, grateful is not even enough <laughs> to say how I feel about what has happened. And out of that, you know, has come some other decisions in my life because that tumor was a wake-up call for me. I'm 50 years old this year. And that tumor said to me, okay, what are you going to do with the rest of your life here? You're not going to always be here. You could be gone sooner or later, but either way, you're not going to be around on this plane forever. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? And, you know, slowly over the past year or so, I have been saying yes to myself in, you know, bigger and bigger ways. And this tumor has just sped up <laughs> the yeses. <laughs> oh. And part of, as uh, Reverend Mitch was um, asking me to explain what this feeling of failure was about, Along came the knowing of what I need to be doing, how I need to be living, you know, what I need to be giving of myself to the world because I'm meant to be here, not just for myself, but to help uplift others exactly. through my own life. And some things have been clarified to me it has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do even what people normally even think of as spirituality. Because a lot of that even, you know, kind of borderlines on dogma and dogmatic belief systems and, and so forth. This is really about releasing the gifts and capabilities and capacities that are innate within each and every one of us out into our lives and out into the world to bring the greatest good that each of us here is uniquely here to bring. Because yeah. each of us has something in us that we came here to do. Exactly. And as a child, I used to tell my mother that, you know, I'm here to leave my mark on the world. And she would ask me, well, what do you mean? Well, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew that I was here to leave my mark on the world in some kind of way ever since I was a child. Mm -hmm. And now I know. I know more what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am in the process now of uh, manifesting my move from South Carolina back to California. And my home is to be a hermitage, a place of healing. And I'm seeing, you know, healing gardens, you know, and I'm seeing a beautiful garden in the front mm -hmm. full of night blooming jasmine and floribunda roses in different colors mm -hmm. and rosemary, a garden that invites people into a sense of peace. And then as we walk through the house to the backyard, another garden full of herbs that I can teach people about their medicinal values and crops to eat, to show people how delicious homegrown produce can be and yeah. how we can have abundance right in our own backyards that we don't have to rely on the grocery store for every morsel of our food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it can also be relatively easy to have that abundance of fruit and vegetables in your backyard. 
you know, and I imagine, you know, having all kinds of gatherings where people can come and experience, you know, the spirits of these wonderful plants and these, you know, kitty friends that I'll have to greet people, you know, just a place of peace where people can come and get a sense of relaxation where they can open up to who they really are and discover what their innate capabilities are and then go out into the world as thought leaders of their own and take that to other people. So out of this tumor has come new decisions <laughs> and a whole new yes to my life. And it's not as if I haven't known that these are things that I'm here to do. But all of this that was there mm -hmm. has been unraveled in the simple phrase, it is done. Love that. <laughs> yeah, this is this is why you know we're here to live life to allow life itself to flow through us you know we're here to celebrate life to celebrate all there is in this incredible world and mm -hmm. when we celebrate that and honor that and allow it to flow through us life is a grand celebration yeah we are here for yeah. that this is the time you know we humanity has been in this time of darkness for a very long time and there hasn't been a whole lot to celebrate and now we are moving into a whole new cycle where it is time for us to raise up to raise our vibration to look up and see more of what this beautiful universe has to offer <laughs> the infinite yeah. possibilities are here and they're all choices you know we're, we've been trained that if we don't see it then it's we can't have it but and that it's not here <laughs> exactly yes yeah. but all the universe of infinite possibilities mm -hmm that we are all part of those possibilities are un are non-physical they they're not in our lives until we choose them but the moment we choose something we make a decision this is what i desire this is what i'm going to do this is who i'm going to be mm. it is done ask and it is given is universal law yeah, and it really is all here now. Yes. Because we exist in many dimensions. Yes. And there's a version of me that is living very differently. So all I need do is to tune in through my choice. That's all choice is really doing is tuning me into a, another reality that is just as physical as this, that is just as real as this and apparent as this, it exists and my consciousness just goes there. And the, the genius in it, in sharing this with people is we don't have to convince people to believe a different belief system because it's not about that. Um, my night job is uh, working the front desk at a hotel and I've uh, worked at this job for many years and, you know, I'm working myself out of that job now as I restart my uh, coaching services. But uh, a few years ago before, you know, the shutdowns happened and everything. So it was like, it was about three and a half or so years ago, this woman walked in um, to the hotel and um, we talked after we I had checked her in and everything. And she was very, very worried 
worried that her and her husband were going to lose her home because her husband was a truck driver. And one night as he was on the road, his truck broke down and he put it up on the jack, got under it to fix something. The truck fell off the track and down onto his head. And she was awakened. By a telephone call, the police were there telling her her husband was dying. And they didn't know that they were going to be able to save him. So they wanted to at least give her a chance to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. This is a Christian woman. And she began to tap into her faith. And she began to speak in tongues and to call his soul back to his body. Mm -hmm. And he came back. And it had been a difficult time, you know, with the healing and everything. And he still had some, some issues that he was still dealing with at the time that uh, they had they were at the hotel. But she was in such fear that they were going to lose their home because now he was the breadwinner and he wasn't able to work. He was on disability now. And I said to her, well, let's change our direction of thought. You already have a home. And your bills are already paid. And I just began to talk her into a sense of feeling that it's done already, that what she wants is already a done deal. And I said, God already has the perfect home for you. It could very well be the one that you're living in right now, or it could be another one that is better than the, what you've got right now. But either way, you have a home and all your bills are already paid. And she tapped into that and said, thank you. I received that. And a few months later, um, uh, one of my uh, employees, because I was the front desk manager at the time, um, sent me a message. I was at home. I was on my day off and told me this woman called the hotel looking for you and wanted to talk to you. And I was like, Really? Who would? I'm thinking, could it be a family member? But I haven't given enough any family members my work number, and most they don't even know what hotel I work at. So I was trying to figure out who this could be, and uh, I said, "Well, what was her name?" And they told me, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I remember her. She was the woman that I had talked to about. It is done. You already have a home, and your bills are paid." And she said that. She just wanted to thank you and let you know that everything is okay. That they have their home and everything is fine. I didn't have to convince her to give up her religious belief. It wasn't about that. It was about assisting her to reach a higher vibration, to manifest the good that her heart wanted. Exactly. You know, we're already living in a world of blessing and prosperity. We're looking right at it and we're not seeing it. Right. It exists right here and right now. And it just takes us to make a choice to begin to see it. And I've had that happen to me over and over and over when I suddenly reach a point of choice about something. And all of a sudden I start seeing these opportunities that... I didn't see before, but they were always right around me. They're right here and right now. We're really not creating anything. Creation is finished. There's nothing new being created. All of it was created at the beginning of the Big Bang when we all left the bosom of the Father and some of us became suns and some of us became planets and some of us became humans and ants and trees and whatever else. And everything was already created. It's just consciousness gives the illusion that some things are here and some are not because we chose to forget who we really are so that we could have the experience of creating. <laughs> it's really manifesting, not creating. The word manifest means to show. We're showing ourselves who we really are. Exactly. That's what manifesting really is. Showing ourselves, demonstrating ourselves and who we are. We're not really creating anything. It's already done. Everything is already done. 
We just have to make a choice and our choice will pop us into that reality that already exists where we experience that it's done. And that other version of us still exists and is still experiencing those old realities. But we get to change what part of reality we experience. And I love that. And I love that you talk about you know, the grand beings of light and that it is our soul. The soul is the solution because that really is where what it comes down to. We're it. Yeah. Yeah. We've been living in this state of amnesia. We have forgotten who we are. We have forgotten that we are these grand beings of light, that we are creators and manifestors, that we can just simply mm. have, do, be, whatever it is that we choose. We have simply yeah. been convinced <laughs> that there's something wrong with us. We're sinners. We're not good enough. All of that. And exactly. none of it's true. This is this is the time of the great awakening. This is where we wake yeah. up. We snap ourselves out of that state of amnesia. And we start to take our power back. And we start to look inside for the answers instead of outsourcing all of it automatically looking for somebody else to fix us. Yeah. It's all right in here. We don't need. Have you ever else. watched the uh, Celestine prophecy movie? No, I haven't. I'll, I'll send you that link. I That's highly great. suggest great. your audience also watches that movie. It's on YouTube and it's free to watch. So it's just the right price. Awesome. The Celestine prophecy it's based on the book the celestine yeah. prophecy and it it's it's a story that shows how there are multiple realities existing in this time and space some are living in that grander reality and others are not and those who are not living there just can't see it even though we appear to be living on the same planet at the same time, we're having very different experiences of reality. And that movie, the Celestine Prophecy movie, really gives a, a good um, representation of what that looks like. Oh, nice. Yeah, if you put the, if you send me the link, I'll put the link in the show notes. So if anybody oh. wants to watch that, then just check cool. in the show notes and the link will be there. Yes, cool. I always, you know, this just reminds me of, I, I teach a lot about that we are like Russian stacking dolls. That, you know, every time you take the doll apart, there's a smaller one inside and then you put them back together and it gets bigger. So we are like the physical self is like the smallest doll in the middle. And then each layer of higher consciousness is like a bigger version of ourselves we are all of those dolls all at the same time and it's just where which layer are we placing our attention in because yeah. each one of those dolls is living a different life it will have a different experience because it has a different level of awareness and a different um, connection to source itself. It's each consecutive bigger doll has more connection to source itself, has greater awareness, has greater possibilities because it's aware of more. But we are all of those. The biggest one is source itself. The I am. The yeah. one. And <laughs> we can place our attention in any layer at any time. But we have just been so focused down, traumatized by life, that we have just shut our awareness down to that littlest doll and we're just trying to get by. But I, I like you, that you said that, trying to get by. Right. You know, I, I used to love to find money. It's just a little game that I love to play. You know, and before I used, before I moved to uh, Aiken, where I live now, 
I would find money all the time, all over the place. And then I moved to this little town and I didn't find any money. And somehow I concluded, oh, well, I guess people here, you know, don't drop money and, you know, there's no money to be found here. And so my perspective shrunk and I stopped finding money. I didn't find money for years. And one day I was like, hmm, hmm, what if I'm only for not finding money because I'm telling myself that it's not there? Right. So I just started playing with it. And I continue to do it to this day now. Um, I think it was about two weeks ago where I was playing around with, you know, I want to find some money today. It would be just so cool if some money just somehow comes into my life, whether it's a dollar or $10 or $5, whatever, you know, not coins. I like paper money. I like quiet money. <laughs> and <laughs> it was towards the end of my shift at work. And here's a good example of how things are right there and you don't even see it. I didn't see this money that was sitting right there on the ground, right in front of me where I was standing at the front desk until a guest started walking by and he saw it and I saw his eyes go down. So I followed his eyes down and it was some money on the ground. So I'm looking at it and I'm going, mm, I wish I was the one over there walking by it. So he bent down and picked it up and he's looking, he, he looked out the door. I could tell he was trying to make a decision and he looked over at me and he was like, oh, I think somebody dropped this. I was like, oh, okay. And he said, well, what should I do with it? I said, what do you want to do with it? He reaches it out, reaches out and hands it to me. Well, there was the money that I was manifesting. Right. And it was a $10 bill. I have a jar of, uh, you know, like a cook, uh, one of those glass cookie jars like a grandma might have in the kitchen. I have this like glass cookie jar in my bedroom where I store found money and stuff that pe things that people give me and one is um someone gave me some mexican money a while ago they just decided oh here i want to give this to you you know i was in mexico and you know i and she had um what do they call it where they changed exchanged u.s dollars for mexican money and she said well i'm not don't plan on being back there anytime soon so i have no use for this I just felt inspired to give it to you. So it's sitting in my money jar, my found money jar, along with the other money that I've found. And that $10 bill went over there. And it just sits there as a reminder that I'm surrounded by abundance and prosperity of money. And that's, you know, because people often, they, they, they always say, I want abundance. You better be specific. Yes. Because there's abundance of everything. What kind of abundance do you want? Exactly. If you want an abundance of money, say abundance of money, not just abundance. Correct. Because you can have an abundance of lack. Good point. You know, and there's all kinds of abundance. You already have abundance. You have an abundance of air. There's an abundance of people on the planet. So when you're saying, I want abundance, you already have that. Yes. Abundance of what? Do you want abundance of money? Then say that. I'm choosing to have an abundance of money. And that's something that I choose for my life, an abundance of money. And it just keeps coming. And it's the action is so easy, so effortless, you know. And then I get those true miracles where the only action I have to take is just receive it. Right. 
<laughs> I walked yes. into work um, a few weeks ago with no thought about asking the company for more money or anything. I'm just walking around feeling an abundance of money. And I get pulled in to the office by my boss and I'm going, okay, let's see what this is about. Oh, you got a raise. <laughs> and it's the biggest raise that they've ever given me. Wow. Yeah. And I just was, and I laughed as I walked out of the office because I didn't ask them for one. I didn't say anything about wanting more money. I'm just choosing to have more and more money in my life. Exactly. And it just keeps appearing. Right? <laughs> it's amazing what happens when we make a choice. <laughs> Simply decide. We've all been taught that it's not that simple. Well, people, listen up. It is exactly yes. that simple. <laughs> it is as simple yes. as we decide for it to be. <laughs> Magic and <laughs> miracles. It is our birthright. It is who and what we are. We are magic and miracles we are grand beings of light we are one with source itself ask and it is given we're literally just asking ourselves <laughs> like we're just choosing deciding what is it that i'd like i live in this universe of infinite possibilities yeah. <laughs> unlimited possibilities and choices what am I choosing? I'm choosing lack. I'm choosing I'm not okay. I'm cho choose better. Choose more more joyful things. Choose things that you actually desire. Choose things that allow living life force energy to flow through your veins. That's all your body is asking for is for you to be present with it. For you to trust it, for you to feed it with living life force energy, joy, enthusiasm, curiosity, comfort. That's what your body needs. It doesn't need pills. It doesn't need other things. It just needs you <laughs> to be the grand being of light you are. And if you're forgetting to be the grand being of light you are, mm -hmm. your body is going to go, hey, hello. Here's where you're forgetting to be the grand being of light you are. Hello. <laughs> Let me help you with that. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you that it does that. Right. Because sometimes we need that wake up call exactly thank you god hallelujah yes. yes thank you body thank you for being my very mm. best friend my very <laughs> best reminder when i'm not being who i truly am to just give me that little nudge mm. that little ouch to go oh i'm smiling so much that my cheeks hurt right <laughs> <laughs> i love it Oh my oh, God. And I love our yes. conversation so much. This has been so <laughs> inspiring. There have been so many beautiful nuggets of wisdom dropped by you today. And I hope that our audience really gets from this conversation that they have the ability to choose, to simply decide what version of you do you want to be? You can be the victim and you can be the victor. Both are available. You can be the version that there's something wrong with me and you can be the version of I am a grand being of light and I love my life. You get to choose. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ben, thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. Thank you for choosing to share your wisdom with this beautiful audience who are all grand beings of light as we all remember this together. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. And I'll send you that link for the Celestine prophecy too. Beautiful.
So yeah. So Ben, if you want, if people want to reach out to you and find out more or, or have conversation, how do they reach out to you? Where do they find you? They can go to my website, which is in flux <laughs> as I <laughs> am restarting uh, my coaching services. Uh, One power dot live, O N E power dot live. And there's also a link there to my online spiritual community. We I have a a wonderful group of powerful manifestors and we support each other in what we're manifesting and uh, helping each other through whatever obstacles we perceive there are. <laughs> so there's a link to that as well at onepower.live. Great. So please, if you have any interest in reaching out to Ben, please do this because he is a grand being of light with a lot to share. We all have the ability to trigger new awarenesses in each other. And every time I have a conversation with Ben, all kinds of awarenesses get triggered. It's beautiful, beautiful. So please feel free to reach out to Ben. And if you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me at connectingyoutoyou.com. So Ben, is there anything else you'd like to leave our audience with today? Just know that you are the power. No one has more power than you. I've got no magic that you don't have. Lisa doesn't have any magic that you don't have. We simply help you to remember it and to remember who you are. Exactly. We're all grand beings of light. And we can live healthy, wealthy, happy lives if we choose. Ben, thank you so, so much is. for being here today. And so it is. Until next week, everyone, create for yourselves a great week. Choose it to be great. Decide that you're going to have a great week. Mm. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>